From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. All right, the Executive Housekeeper 101, baby, you're back in school. This is perfect for people that have never managed a housekeeping department. And these things that I'm going to talk to you about, they work in your econo class, and they work at the big house on the hill, your four and five diamond properties, and your, uh, what do you call it, your uh, golf resorts, right? Your destination resorts. All the things I talk about, they work anywhere. And the main thing is we operate the same way every day. It doesn't matter if we're slow. It doesn't matter if we're busy. We operate the same way every single day. So now you're ready for the morning standup. The ladies come in, they've signed in, they've got their master keys. They all gather around, your houseman, your laundry, and your guest room attendants or your housekeepers, all gather around for the morning standup. It happens every single morning, even if you show up for that morning meeting with everybody to announce what the instructions are for the day, even if you show up and you don't have something that day, let's just say, or you're, you know, you've got to run to a meeting and, and, and it's okay. You still show up and then you dismiss the meeting, but you show up for that meeting every single day. Respect the meeting, full compliance, respect the meeting. Now keep in mind in the morning meeting, you are addressing a group of people. You are not addressing individuals. Individuals, if you want to meet with them, you make an appointment with them in your office. You deal with individual, interpersonal, uh, you know, issues and conversations in your office by appointment. The morning meeting is group discussion specifically for the work of the day. And if you allow other stuff into that meeting, you allow chaos into your meeting. And now I wanna talk about why it's your meeting. It's your meeting because it's your meeting. It's the moment in time in a day when you give the instructions for the focus of the day. That is the most important thing to me in the morning is the focus. What focus? my focus. I'm going to invite everybody to understand that when they see me on the floors every day at one o'clock, from one o'clock to five o'clock, because that's when I do my floors, they need to know why I'm going into the rooms. Why is that important? Because most executive housekeepers I've found never go to the floors unless they're under the gun from the general manager because things are being complained about. So they're going to go up there and whoosh, Crack that whip, baby. Make sure everybody's doing their job. Boy, I'm gonna come up today. I'm gonna be checking and you better blah, blah, blah. You just destroy your department when you do this. Wake up. You just cause damage. You're a damage case if that's your management style. You're on the floors every day, whether it's good or bad, up or down, left or right. You're on the floors every day. Why? That's where the product is. And then I don't have time to get into it, but your real goal, the kind of the subtext is you as the director of housekeeping, the executive housekeeper, you wanna run into guests. You wanna knock on doors and have the guest open the door so you can greet them. Oh my God, the executive housekeeper is knocking on my door to ask me personally what I think? Oh yeah, oh, I can't wait to do that. I'm looking for that. I don't avoid occupied rooms. They're the most important room. Why? Because the customer, the guest is in there spending money every day for what I do for them. I want the housekeepers to know what I'm doing and I don't want them to worry about anything else. I don't want them fearful. I don't want them paranoid. I don't want them nervous around me. I want them knowing, oh, he's up here. He's just looking at coffee pots today. Oh, he's on the floor. Oh, he's just going in to see what needs to be done for the next renovation. Keep your people resting, peaceful, soft-hearted, understanding, faithful, confident, relaxed. Man, if you run nervous, if you manage through nervous and fear and intimidation, get away from me. I don't want any part of it. I don't want to be managed that way. Do not manage housekeeping through fear and insecurity. If you intimidate and keep people fearful and nervous for their job and they're going to get written up, you're up there to find out what they did wrong. Oh, they're going to, oh man, there's a payback for you. Ugh, it's not pretty. So in the morning meeting, you have everybody there. You're going to talk about groups that are coming in, what time they come in, any special instructions uh, about that group that you received when you were there at the uh, group meeting with the group leaders with all the other executives and operating committee members um, to find out what the, the group needs were. You're gonna tell everybody about the group. Tell everybody about uh, what their needs are. You're gonna tell uh, everybody, hey, the group is departing today. Be aware, they're here till late. So let's do this first and that second and them last. It's all instructions about the day's focus. And let me just pop in here real quick. Keep it simple, stupid. KISS, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. And here's the other one. If it isn't simple, it isn't solved. 
You don't have 52 things for them to worry about. You're going to come into that meeting and you're going to announce one thing about what you're going to do when you're on those floors that day, because they know you're coming. Tell them why you're there. So they can go into the rooms ahead of you and make sure that one thing is fixed and is done right. That's quality control. I would go onto my floors for one thing and I would tell the ladies, I do not care if I see the dog poop on the floor. I will not say nothing. I don't care about the poop. I'm only looking to see that there's no dust on your artwork. I'm only looking to see if your chairs are straight and in the proper position and a key card away from the wall, no chairs or furniture touches the wall. That's such bad form, dear God. I'm only in rooms today because I'm making sure that we have the right magazines. One thing, one thing only. All right, I'm gonna talk about two words that are really, really super important to me and that's quality control. Control of the quality. Now, <clears throat> you're not gonna have control of the quality when you are chasing multiple things at the same time. Let me explain why executive housekeepers get fired. The number one reason I've seen by experience, there may be statistics otherwise, you may have another opinion otherwise, love all this, I'm just gonna give you my two cents. Here's why eventually um, executive housekeepers quit or are fired, they can't fix the problem. They keep giving away money because of complaints at the front desk, and they keep having upset housekeepers in the general manager's office with the crying, complaining. Uh, it's overwhelming when you have problems with dust, when you have problems with uh, finding hair in the sink, when you have problem with the coffee maker just isn't clean and it gets complained about, when you have a problem with uh, repairs that don't get done, when you come in and there's uh, condoms, you know, under the bed or something, you know, festive and fun like that. <laughs> Even in the package, bad form. So they, they can't get anything fixed and they're constantly chasing this animal and they blame it on short staffing, they blame it on this, they blame it on that. It's the executive housekeeper's fault all the time, every time. Quality control works like this. Let's say I have a problem with um, uh, complaints that the, the, the hair in the bathtub or in the sink. I've got problems with um, smell. Uh, I've got problems with, you know, mildew. I've got problems with um, dirty coffee makers or silverware in the drawer that's dirty or light bulbs that are out or whatever the problem is. And don't even ever trust in engineering. Don't even fool yourself. You're the director of engineering. Wake up, you don't even know it. But when you wake up and realize you're the director of engineering, it's up to you to get stuff fixed. You're gonna be happy and engineering is gonna be happier. I'll get into that some other time. Quality control is this. I've got four or five things that are constantly dogging me and, and coming up as a problem with complaint in my room. Things are dirty, whatever. You have quality control issues because you don't fix one of them. You try to fix all of them and you will never fix or subdue a seven-headed snake. You gotta cut the heads off one snake at a time. I got a problem, every time I go into my room, my coffee makers are dirty, or they got a little coffee in the bottom, or they don't take the coffee out of the basket. No problem. Morning meeting is where I fix this. Wake up, people, heads up. Today I will be on the floors and I'm only looking at one thing. I'm looking at coffee makers. Is your coffee maker clean? I'm gonna go in the room, I look at your coffee maker, and that's all I'm gonna look at. Now I'm gonna leave the room. First of all, the object is to Zero in on one thing. Let there be dog poop on the floor. That's fine. But I want to eradicate this coffee maker problem and I've got to develop habits in the people. And they ought to know he inspects what he expects. And they'll learn they better respect what I inspect because I expect it. At the end of the day, it comes back to me, it comes back to them. We're both gonna suffer at the end of the day if things aren't right. Pick one problem and eradicate it from your property. One thing, if I talk about coffee pots every morning, I'll be back on the floors looking at coffee pots. If I do that every morning for two weeks, I'm good for that because I'm gonna pound on that beast until I don't have a single problem, till they know a super high priority is coffee makers. I deal with common denominators. When every room I go into, the coffee makers are dirty and I focus on that, I now fix, let's say you have 154 rooms in your little boutique hotel, 
I fixed that problem in 154 rooms. You see the power of working on one thing until you get it right. I fix it 154 times. And then it becomes habitual, it's not a problem. Then I go on to the next thing. I might be on that next thing two days, three days, and eradicate it. I might be on it for two weeks maybe three weeks, but I'm gonna pound on that till I get it fixed. Now I've got coffee makers clean. Now I'm working on hair. I'm just gonna be in the, in the restrooms looking underneath the bowl of your toilet, toilet. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm interested in. I'm not worried about anything else. I didn't tell them don't worry about anything else. I said, it's all I'm gonna worry about. I eradicate this problem. When it gets fixed and we habitually keep it maintained, I move to this problem. I have control of the quality now. You don't have control when you're chasing this and chasing that, chasing this and chasing that. And six things that, that's always a problem, you can't ever fit, the oh, problem keeps coming back up. The GM told you, I'm tired of these complaints about, you know, dirty toilets, dirty floors. Well, you can't fix dirty floors and everything else. You can only fix dirty floors and then do that until they're fixed. Once they're fixed, they're fixed. And generally, they stay fixed because it's ingrained in the people. Boy, that's inspected, that's serious. He comes and looks his face underneath that dirty toilet every day. It, we, as a team, we build the focus. And then when that focus is done, I move on to the next thing that is a common denominator in every single room. And with the morning meeting, this is how you accomplish that. Let me tell you about how uh, it's not accomplished or what not to do. Executive housekeepers stand up in the me morning meeting and they say, you need to clean your coffee makers and you need to fold your towels to where they hang at the same level. I don't want to go up there and find that the magazines on the coffee table are all crooked. By the time you get to magazines are all crooked, they forgot about the coffee maker. You can't give them five things. They will not remember them. And it's not because they're lacking in intellect. It's because, come on, man, keep it simple. If it isn't simple, it will not get solved one thing a day until it's eradicated. And at the end of the day, you find out there's really our problems of re repetitious complaints or shortcomings, stuff that shows up in the comment card. This was dirty, that didn't work. It's only about five or six, maybe seven things. So here's what you do. Once you work through the three or four or five things that are common to every room, what do you do? You go back to the first one. And what was it we talked about? Coffee makers. Go back to the coffee maker and then hit on that and refocus on that for a week. And then the next week, focus on the underneath side of the toilet. And then the next week, focus on hair in the sink. And then on the next week, focus on placement of amenities or whatever. One thing at a time, baby. If you do that, you have quality control. You will truly eradicate these problems out of your hotel. One problem at a time. And you will never do it chasing six or seven things at a time. Now I wanna talk about something that's very dear to my heart that's very important. And that's two to one positive. Executive housekeepers, I've seen general managers do this. They go up, they go into a room, they go over and they do this and they do that and they go, ah, look at that, ah, la, 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 and, and uh, uh, what, 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 that, that, what, and then, uh, just, uh, what, what, hey, it, it, it all over the room. And you're just taking a knife and just stabbing that guest room attendant in the face every time you do this. Why? You're complicating it. She can't be perfect on everything the second you come into a room unannounced. But they can be perfect on one thing at a time. And in the wake of that, building habits that maintain it. And the purpose is not to find out where they're not providing service. You don't, you don't need to find out where they're not cleaning. You don't need to understand or point out to them where they're not vacuuming, not straightening, not folding, not this, not that, not that. Uh, you want to find out. You want to find out where they're right. You want to find out where the coffee maker is clean. You see the difference, the total opposite approach? I want to find out where the coffee maker is clean. I want to find out where the the towels hang at the right length. I want to find out where the toilet bowl is not, it, it is clean underneath. I want to find out where the magazines are straight. I want to find out where the furniture is straight. I want to find out when the spots are gone. I want to find, I want to find out where it's right. And when you turn the tide on this kind, with this kind of psychology in your department, and I'm going to show you how it's done. They want to rise to the occasion of that praise and that honor of doing well. They want to rise to it and they do not want to disappoint you because to disappoint them, they feel shame, they disappoint themselves. And nobody likes to live a life disappointed. You know what I mean, Vern? Now listen to me. It's two to one positive. You have to have the two positive 
before you can ever get to the negative or the complaint or the issue with somebody who's not doing the job. If you have two positives, you build the proper door for the negative, right? If all you do is negatives, you don't build a door for the positive. Oh, God, look at that. That's good, isn't it? I start working on the, the, the build the positive, find them right program. And it happens in the morning stand-up. I come in and I say, I'm going to be on the floors and I'm going to be looking underneath your toilet bowl in the back to make sure it's clean. That's the only thing I care about. I'm not looking at coffee makers or curtains or carpet or stain or furniture or crooked or straight or shower curtains. I'm not looking at any of that. I'm just going to look at the toilet bowl. Now, when I come on the floors at one o'clock, uh, and here in a minute, I'm gonna explain why I come in at one and not in the morning. So I go into the rooms at one o'clock every day and I go to every floor, I go to every housekeeper in their section and I go up and I say, tell me what rooms you've cleaned. I want vacant rooms you've cleaned. I want occupied rooms that you've cleaned. I wanna know what you do in those occupied rooms while guests are there paying their money, right? I'm gonna go and find out what rooms have you finished? Oh, you got three occupieds and two vacant rooms that you finished? Good, I'm going into all five in your section. I want you to know I go into those occupied rooms. You better clean that coffee maker in an occupied room. It's more important than any other coffee maker in the house. When they know what I'm looking for, they set out to go in as soon as they get to the room and fix that problem, clean that object. Then they're free to go and do whatever whatever they want to do in the room, whatever order they want to do. But they, they, I noticed that when I started this, they would go in specifically first, fix that problem. Why? They knew any minute now was going to come around the corner. And if they had a finished room, they better have that one thing fixed. And it's so easy. They don't fuss or worry or stress about anything else. They work relaxed and then they're relaxed because the one thing they know that I'm looking for, they have fixed it. So what happens? I find people where they're right, where they're correct, where they're successful, and I constantly am high-fiving down the hallway. I'm inspecting what I expect. So I go look at the toilet. Great, she did it, he did it, whoever. I go to the next room, ah, great. I go to the two occupied rooms that they finished. Perfect, beautiful. And the coffee maker straight and away from the wall, great. So when I come out of that room, here comes the positive. Veronica or Victoria or Imelda or Lupita or, you know, Yola, you know, whoever. Kathy, Susan, high five. Man, I love your rooms, man. You got your coffee makers rock, baby. That's how we do it. You do it every day. Every day I go to your rooms, this stuff's right. Are there other things that are wrong? Yeah, yeah. But what I'm inspecting is right. And that's what I want. Inspection with respect, success. I make sure it gets done. They make sure they do it. I give the praise. They receive the praise. We rejoice together. High five and a body slam, baby. Two to one positive. Two positives, always being found right, builds the door for what might be called negative. Like, look, you really blew it and you didn't do this and we got a big complaint. We need to have a conversation about this and document it. You built a door for that conversation to be okay, to be at peace. Why? In general, they know they've got all this positive invested into their bank and built up. Every once in a while we gotta make a withdrawal and and have a you know conversation, a little correction. But they don't worry about it now, why? Because they know that in my eyes, the big picture, they are two thumbs up. And I want that as an employee, as an executive housekeeper with my general manager. I wanna know that, listen, I got enough going on, if I slip now and again, it's okay. It's an oops, it's not an ouch. It's a stumbling stone, no, what is it? Uh, it's a stepping stone, not a stumbling stone. Beautiful, perfect. Okay, so we covered the morning meeting, one thing at a time, keep it simple. If it isn't simple, it isn't solved. You tell them what you're gonna be looking at, and it's only one thing. You look at that thing every day until it's eradicated from your department. Now you have quality control. And then once that gets fixed, you go on to the next thing, you go on to the next thing, and you'll see these complaints start slowly falling off the roster, coming off the comment cards. They quit complaining about it at the front desk. Now you've gotta go in those rooms 
And while you're in there inspecting that one thing every day, you're also making notes in every room, finding what are common problems in every room, common shortcomings, because eventually those shortcomings will rise to the top and make their glorious day and their announcement in the morning meeting, hey, I'm a problem and I need to be fixed, everybody, and quit chasing stuff on an individual basis. This one can't clean mirrors, always banging on that one. This one doesn't get the furniture straight, always banging on that. Chasing four or five things on an individual basis we're a team. The team does one thing at a time. And we have two to one positive, two positive to one negative. We're finding out where everybody is right and correct and beautiful and perfect and successful. Go home, enjoy your family. Great job. We're going to come back tomorrow. And we're going to do it again. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to do one thing at a time. We're going to eradicate problems. Then we're going to move on to another problem. And it's all done in the morning stand-up. It's the whole purpose of the morning stand-up. Now I have a couple more minutes here, right? So let me just throw this in. It's a random side note subject change. I spend the first half of my day on administration, scheduling, payroll, uh, human resources papers that got to be filled out, uh, calling and talking to vendors, um, blah, 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 drinking coffee with a general manager after our morning stand-up. It's always important to me. The first half of my day is all administration. I'm in the office and that's where I am. And the other thing is that first half of the day, it allows the guest room attendants to be in the rooms and getting a certain amount of rooms done. So when I go up there, I'm not waiting for product to inspect. They've all got, you know, half their day done. They've all got six, seven rooms done. So I have plenty uh, of rooms available for me to go into. If you go in the morning, you kind of waste your time. And then I have the lunch at about 11, 11.30, and then about 12, 12.30, whatever, however it is it works out. I go to the floors. I start at the top and I go down. And I go from section to section, floor to floor, from top to the bottom. And I go in rooms for everybody. Every single day I'm there, every person on deck sees me in their rooms. We have a an agreement about inspect what you expect. I spend 50% of my time in the product. I spend 50% of my time high-fiving in the hallway with people that I found who did it right. I find 50% of my time discovering where I'm going next. So I'm always looking ahead so I can plan, so I can um, move into the future and know what the priorities are. We fix this, oh, we've got to get on this problem over here. And eventually, after a year or so of this, man, you get it all nailed. Everybody is habitual in what they do. They understand that they're doing a great job. It's so much easier when the product is right, human resources issues go away, people don't act. Listen, if you don't give your people inspection and attention, they're gonna rise up and they're going to act out, baby. They're gonna, they're gonna act out. They're gonna act out. Your problem, your HR problems, is because they ain't worried about product. They're worried about other foolishness and silliness and nonsense. All right, man, you got it. Morning meeting every day. The daily focus. Quality control. One thing at a time, baby. Eradicate one thing and it goes away. Yes, yeah, one less bell to answer, one less egg to fry. Mm. I love you, baby. Ciao. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com.